Good afternoon. Woo, I hear the, feel the excitement, that's fantastic. So I'm Holly Arnold, I'm the administrator at the Maryland Transit Administration. It is such an honor to be here with you today to celebrate an exciting new chapter for transit in our great state. I'd like to take a moment to welcome our many distinguished guests who are joining here today. Each of you has played a role in bringing us here. Thank you to everyone who has worked so hard to advocate for expanded transit in, for Baltimore and the entire region. It is my great honor to introduce our first speaker. Governor Westmore, thank you for your leadership and dedication to improving transit for the people of this region. Your strong advocacy and support means so much to our riders. Please join me in welcoming Governor Westmore. Thank you. Thank you all, thank you. Thank you. Please everybody, thank you so much. Please take a seat everybody. Please, it's hot, it's hot. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Thank you so much and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, and, and first, I just want to say uh, to Administrator Arnold, thank you so much for your leadership, your diligence, and your hard work for helping to make today happen. We are grateful and we are thankful. So thank you for, for everything you continue to do for, for Maryland. And I got to tell you, I mean, this, this, is, this is a great day for Baltimore, and this is a great day for Maryland. This is the day that we have spent weeks planning for. This is the day that all partners in government have spent months preparing for. And this is the day that many Marylanders have spent years waiting for. Today, I am proud to announce that we are officially getting the Red Line Project moving again here in Baltimore. And, and listen, you, you, can't, you can't understand the significance of today without recognizing the history that led to this moment. Over two decades ago, leaders from around the state and every part of society began working on the initial iteration of the Red Line Project because they understood that this city has hundreds of thousands of jobs, but people cannot access them easily. They understood that we have some of the best colleges and hospitals, museums and theaters in the world, and they're all difficult to get to. They understood that our economy is stable, but not dynamic and that our GDP has been falling behind cities like Washington and Philadelphia and Boston for years. And so they decided to act. And by the way, let's be clear that all the dynamics that motivated them to act before, many of them still exist to this day. So they made a plan to build a transit line running east to west that would connect people with jobs, that would connect folks with access to hospitals and businesses and restaurants and museums that would drive economic development and GDP growth. And then after years of planning, after years of community input, and after millions of dollars spent, the state government pulled the plug. And here's the tragedy. That decision to end the red line after all that time and all that work and all that money was not just about a transit line. That decision was about who would reap the benefits of transportation investments and who would be left behind. At a time when Baltimore was reeling from one of the most trying eras in recent history, it was very clear and a message was sent that Baltimore was not going to be a priority. The people that work here, the people that dream here, and the people that live here and just simply want to live with dignity and opportunity, they weren't going to be a priority. Nearly $1 billion in federal funds were handed back voluntarily. $700 million that were meant to be used for the Baltimore Red Line went towards building more state roads outside of the city. Government left the city of Baltimore and the Baltimore region and the dreams of the people here behind. 
Well, today, I stand here to say that right now, our state is ready to do big things again. This administration stands in partnership with community groups, with local elected officials, and elected officials at all levels of government, with advocates, with activists, with residents, and we say with one voice, now is the time that we are going to get this right. We're going to get this right for our economy, because you cannot have economic mobility if you do not have physical mobility. We are going to get this right for our environment because forcing people to rely on a car to get everywhere they need to go is not just unfair, it is, it is environmentally harmful. And we will work to get this right because we'll be working together to seize this moment in our nation's history when the stars are aligned to invest in public transit. The President of the United States has been very clear that building better, stronger, and more accessible infrastructure is a priority. And I want to shout out our incredible federal delegation for their leadership on this issue. Senator Carnan, it is great to see you here, and thank you for your leadership making this happen. Even though I do have to acknowledge you have a Marine Corps hat on, which I'm a little, I feel a certain type of way about that, Senator. <laughs> But we say that we have federal, a federal delegation and federal partners who understand the importance of getting this moment right. And so also to everyone who's out there who's been waiting and waiting, I say to you this, this is going to happen. And we need your input. While we are grateful for how much work has went into the planning of the project in years past, this initiative is not simply going to be an effort to pull something off a shelf and plug and play. We will be thoughtful about how to proceed and make use of the work that has already been done. We will also apply a keen eye for adjustments that need to be made to account for some very meaningful societal shifts. And to all Baltimoreans, now is the time to leave your mark on this project, to help redefine the trajectory of this city and this region. And additionally and importantly, we are taking immediate steps to address the transit needs of Baltimore City. This fall, the MTA will start limited, bus, limited stop bus service to speed up travel across the Red Line corridor to help close the gap between what's needed in the community and what's currently being provided by the state. And in the weeks and months ahead, we will be studying a future phase of the Red Line project that will extend the current Red Line plan to job centers in eastern Baltimore County. Our communities are expanding. Our jobs are growing. Maryland's on the move, y'all. I don't know if y'all have heard yet. <laughs> the rest of the country has. And we need to make sure that everyone in the region can get from where they live to where opportunity lies, whether that's in West Baltimore or whether that's in East Baltimore County. Taken together, it's clear we are moving with an urgency that our community demands and that our community needs. And so, to those who have watched progress die, to those who have had their dreams deferred, to those who feel like they just should flat out give up, hear me clearly when I say, in Maryland, in this moment, we can do big things again, and we will. This is going to be Maryland's decade. This project will be a core reason why, and we are going to need everybody's support in order to help us get here. Thank you so much for your leadership. This is an exciting moment to celebrate, and celebrate we will do because tomorrow we get to work. Thank you all so much for being here for all you're doing.
Thank you, Governor. As a longtime MTA employee and a transit rider, this is such an exciting day. So thank you for your leadership. And now I'd like to welcome to the lecture a person who has played a central role in prioritizing transportation. As a transportation engineer, Lieutenant Governor Aruna Miller knows that reliable, equitable, and accessible transit is critical to connecting community across Maryland. She has a deep understanding of transportation issues and is a strong advocate for creating equitable transit solutions. Lieutenant Governor Miller. Thank you so much, Administrator Arnold. Governor, I think you said earlier it's hot today. I would say it's red hot, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's great to be here with you, Governor, members of our congressional delegation, state delegation, Secretary Wiedefell, County Executive, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, industry leaders, business leaders, and advocates, and everyone who's joined us today. This is one of the most exciting announcements ever. A once-in-a-generation transformative opportunity to build an east-west transit line in Baltimore City, an opportunity to invest in the people of Baltimore. As a trained professional engineer, I know just how powerful of an instrument that transportation is. It's an instrument of equity, economic vitality, environmental justice, and freedom. Baltimore City, like many others, faces challenges in transportation, congestion, and accessibility. And the red line will be a transformative project, one that will right the wrongs, most important of which is equity. Many neighborhoods in Baltimore lack reliable and efficient transportation options. This lack of connectivity restricts opportunities for education, employment, and access to essential services the red line will bridge this gap and connect neighborhoods that have been systemically underserved for generations. The red line offers a fast, efficient, and reliable alternative to driving, which will improve air quality, making Baltimore a healthier and more sustainable place to live. The red line will serve as a catalyst for economic growth and development. The construction of the transit system will generate jobs and stimulate local businesses. It will attract new investments, spur revitalization in undeveloped areas, and help make Baltimore an even more attractive destination for tourists, further boosting our economy. As we face the challenges of climate change, it is critical that we invest in sustainable transportation options. By encouraging the use of public transit, the red line will reduce greenhouse gas emissions, contributing to a greener future for Baltimore and the planet as a whole. The red line is not just about transportation. It's about building a stronger, more connected, more inclusive, more equitable Baltimore. It's about providing equal opportunities for all residents, easing congestion, fostering economic growth, and preserving our environment. The future of Baltimore depends on the red line. The future of Maryland depends on the red line because Maryland is a state where we will leave no one behind. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, for nearly five decades, Senator Ben Cardin has represented Maryland. He has been a strong transit supporter, and his work ensures that the Baltimore region doesn't have to go to the back of the line when we're relaunching the red line. I'd like to welcome Senator Cardin to the podium. Holly, uh, thank you very much. Governor, you want the hat for a little while? <laughs> you can keep that. <laughs> Uh, the, the Governor Moore, uh, let me thank you. Um, the Governor is the leader of our team, Maryland. He has us all working together for the people of Maryland, and are we moving forward under Governor Moore's leadership? Congratulations on an incredible start. And we still have a lot more time together, so we have a lot more things to get done. 
Uh, your federal delegation is with you. I want to bring greetings from Congressman Infume. His grandson is graduating, and that is why he is not physically with us. Uh, but as Senator Van Hollen and I know, he's been a key player in the House in advancing transit and issues concerning Baltimore uh, and has been a key player in regards to the red line, strongly supports our efforts. We are united as your federal partners to do everything we can to make this happen as quickly and as efficiently as possible. It was 10 years ago when they conceived this 14-mile rapid rail line connecting East Baltimore and West Baltimore. It was to give an economic future to our city and region, and it was to give us hope for connecting people, jobs, and opportunity. Estimated 13,000 jobs. That was 10 years ago. Estimated $6 billion impact on transit-related economic activity as a result of the red line. This was a game changer for Baltimore, and we were moving forward with it. The Federal Transit Administration gave a green light to the red line in 2015 and authorized $900 million of federal funds to make that a reality. And then we had the previous administration that said no. As the governor pointed out, they redirected, it was close to $2 billion into road projects. And Mayor Scott, none of that money came to Baltimore City. County, County Executive Shesky, less than 1% of that money went to Baltimore County. Baltimore was left behind. Well, guess what? We now have an administration in Annapolis that's saying yes. Yes to economic development in Baltimore. Yes to Baltimore's future. And it's not just with the red line. Look in front of you, reconnecting communities. We have an administration that's going to do something about that. And guess what? You have a friendly partner in the Biden administration in Washington, giving you the tools so you can succeed. And you have a unified federal delegation that will support you every way. So yes, we are pr proud of the Frederick Douglass Tunnel that's being done in Baltimore, the, the work being done at the Maryland Port Administration under your leadership, using partnerships with the federal government as you should, Penn Station being redirected into a multimodal transportation hub. These are exciting big projects for Baltimore under the leadership of the Moore administration with the partnership from Washington. We are making progress. So Team Maryland has helped. You might have noticed that we put some language, uh, Senator Van Hollen and I working in, the, to put some language in the infrastructure bill. It is known as the red line language because it deals with projects that were, we call them inactive. That's a polite way of saying it. But had earlier ratings and evaluations. We'll be given better consideration, easier consideration, as we move forward with the red line. Senator Van Hollen and I talked to Deputy Administrator Vanderpool earlier this month. And I can tell you, we talked directly about the red line and the need to get our federal partnership. And I want to appreciate the representatives from the Federal Transit Administration that are with us today, showing the partnership that we have with our cities around the nation. So this is a great day for Baltimore, giving us great hope in our future. I know I have many of my colleagues from state and local government that are here. We are going to work to Team Maryland, not only to make sure the red line is done done right with community input, but that we use that as a building block to economic opportunity and empowerment and social justice issues and all of the above. That's our commitment as your federal partners. We're going to be there every step of the way. Congratulations, Governor, for your leadership. Thank you, Senator.
Uh, we're so lucky here in Baltimore to have two senators who are so dedicated to transit. Senator Chris Van Hollen, he knows that investing in reliable public transit helps create jobs, alleviate traffic, improve road safety, reduce pollution, and more. He served as a strong voice and advocate for transit funding and for Maryland. So I'd like to welcome Senator Chris Van Hollen. Well, thank you, Holly. It is great. Uh, to be here with Team Baltimore, with Team Maryland, to literally get the red line back on track. Um, and Governor, I got my red tie on. We are bullish about the prospects of moving this project forward. You know, it's been said, but it is worth repeating, that we might have been here today gathered to actually celebrate the launch of the red line but for the fact that the previous governor pulled the plug on the red line and pulled the plug on a major investment program for the people of Baltimore. Uh, but we're here to say it's never too late to do the right thing for Baltimore City and the people of Baltimore. And the reason that's happening is that because when Wes Moore, now Governor Moore, and Aruna Miller, now Lieutenant Governor Aruna Miller, were on the campaign trail. They told people what they would do. And once they were in office, they began to follow through. Congratulations on a great first 90 days in the legislative session. But we're here today because they came to see what the challenges were, what the needs were. Thank you, Governor Moore, Lieutenant Governor Miller, for getting us back on track with the red line. And to the Speaker of the House and members of the General Assembly, all of you know this is a team effort. So I want to thank you because you have been there as a strong leader for this project and so many others. Great to see Mayor Scott. Great to see County Executive Johnny Oshevsky. Great to see all of us gathered here, uh, representatives of working people, community leaders. This is a, a full, full house right here getting ready for the red line, a united front. And I'm not going to go through all the benefits. They've been listed. As Senator Cardin said, we knew what the benefits were eight years ago. They've only grown then. I want to thank my, my partner uh, in the Senate, a very good friend to all of us, and of course to Baltimore City, uh, Ben Cardin, for all his work to get us to this point. Uh, he, he's very modest. Uh, he chairs the Infrastructure Subcommittee of the Environment and Public Works Committee and makes sure that he uses that to advance the interests of our state, the great city of Baltimore, and national priorities when it comes to modernizing our infrastructure. Uh, Kwasi Mfume, you know how badly he wanted to be here because he texted Cardin, and I got my text right here, to say, let you know the only thing that kept him away was the fact that his grandson is graduating from high school. And of course, uh, the late Elijah Cummings was incredibly devoted to making this happen. And we remember him today. And I know that Kwasi Mfume is working to make sure he picks up that mantle. Now, as Senator Cardin said, uh, when a program has been uh, essentially left behind by the previous administration, we all have to work together to make sure that we revive it, we reignite it. That's what today is all about. And I was very proud that Senator Cardin and I were able to get into the infrastructure modernization bill, this provision that I call the Keep the Red Line Alive provision in the infrastructure modernization bill. It says that where you've had a program that has been carefully vetted by the FTA previously, and the state and the city want to revive that program, it doesn't have to go to the back of the line. It doesn't have to wait forever and ever to work its way through the process. And to the Assistant Secretary of FTA, Secretary DeCoe, thank you for joining us. As Senator Cardin said, we have a very good conversation with the Deputy Administrator at FTA and really reinforced the point that this was a priority uh, to move forward with. And as Senator Cardin said, and you know, that same infrastructure bill uh, where we had the Keep the Red Line Alive provision also was the, we also had a provision on reconnecting communities. And the reason that is in the National Infrastructure Modernization Bill 
is because the bridge to nowhere. And I'm really pleased that the city put its proposal in, $2 million grant, because we are going to make sure that as we revive the red line, we also uh, address the injustices that were done by the highway to nowhere in West Baltimore. So let me just say on that day, when the plug was pulled, I remember that day very well, because it was, as Senator Cardinal, over a billion dollars, over a billion dollars. And Baltimore City was left out in the cold and let down. At that moment, other people around the country, I think it was California, they were popping the champagne bottles because they were next in line, next in line to get that billion dollars. So it is really heartwarming to see everybody here to say we're still in the game. We're going to get this back on track. We're going to revive the red line, and we're going to get this done. Thank you, Governor. I'm glad that Secretary Wiedefeld is here as part of your team. He's been reaching out. Uh, you got the team in place in the state. Team Maryland, federal team Maryland, Senator Cardin leading the effort uh, is going to be there. And Senator Cardin, I keep telling him, he may have announced he's not running for, for re-election, but man, we got 18 months in the Senate and many more still after that. Thank you all and God bless you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you for those provisions for the Keep Maryland Alive provision. Um, so it goes without saying that a project this large can't be done without support from the federal, state, and local level. One of our key federal partners is USDOT. So I'd like to welcome uh, USDOT Assistant Secretary for Transportation Policy, Christopher Coase. Thank you, Administrator Holly, Governor Moore, Lieutenant Governor Miller. I have to say to Senator Cardin, we worked so many times on Safe Streets for All uh, in my previous life to uh, Senator ha uh, Van Hollen, who has been a huge partner in, in this fight, to Mayor Scott, to County Executive uh, Orleszewski. It is a great day to be in West Baltimore, isn't it? You know, as it was mentioned earlier, uh, so many hands have been put into getting us to this day, Governor. But one of the things that, as the Biden administration has said time and time again, not with the passage of the bipartisan infrastructure law, but over the last two and a half years, we are trying to introduce what we're now calling a new federal partnership, not only with state and local government, but actually with community. And with this moment, I want to say thank you to the residents, the community activists in West Baltimore who organize, who are persistent, and continue to push not only past administrations, but current administrations to make this happen. Because of the great leadership of our president, President Biden, Secretary Buttigieg working in a concert on a bipartisan basis with Senator Cardin and Senator Van Houten, we got a once in a generation bipartisan infrastructure law passed. Well, a lot of times you hear it's a lot of money, but let me tell you how much money. Because for the first time, we have now the most financial dollars going to public transportation ever in the history of public transportation funding. And for projects like this is what we were talking about, getting funded. Because of the bipartisan infrastructure law, as well as the Inflation Reduction Act, communities like West Baltimore, you not only can dream big, but you can take those dreams to truly advance big, transformative projects that not only improve the lives of residents, increase the values of the businesses, but actually truly create new communities of opportunity right here in West Baltimore. Of course, this is bigger than a rail line project that we're celebrating today. As both Senator Carter and Senator Van Hollen mentioned, my office within the Office of the Secretary managed a number of our discretionary grant uh, programs, but one that brings not only a soft spot to my heart, but one that is apropos today of how excited we were because of the great advocacy of the state leadership, of the great advocacy of the local residents, and the great leadership of Senator Van Hollen and Senator Carton. We were pleased to give $2 million as part of the Reconnected Communities because the rail project, while also creating new economic opportunities, is what's going to be truly transformational. Well, as it has been noted, there's been a lot of stops and starts for this project. While there's still much work to be done, and again, the determination and optimism around this east-west corridor, it gives me confidence that we will see this project committed 
and done in the future. But what is more important, not only this project will give good paying union jobs and opportunities for new small businesses, you can count on the federal government to be there with you all the way. And with that, I commend you on taking this first step forward and we will be you again all the way. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Secretary. I, the strong support from the federal government, this project wouldn't be possible. Uh, and speaking of strong support, uh, a strong voice in the General Assembly, Speaker Adrienne Jones has made it her mission to improve the lives of all Marylanders. I'm honored to have the Speaker represent both Baltimore County and our state, and I'm proud to call her a partner in this project. Speaker Jones. Good afternoon, everyone. Before I begin, how many who are sitting in this audience or standing in this audience was a participant in, in those many um, meetings and hearings that we had back in 2015 and a couple years? I just wanted to say thank you. I was as well. I think I've been through every one of them when I was representing another area. Um, so I think we have uh, a time that this is not one of, the, not something that you will have you, the rug pulled out under you. We had that too many times. And, and it makes a big difference when we have our, our partners, our federal partners, of course our, our governor, and, and, and we actually are talking to each other. And it, it does make a difference. And your voices that were uh, expressed over the years, the frustration mine as well. And when we, you know, who, I'm not even gonna go through there. So, <laughs> cause it doesn't, make, it doesn't make sense. So before I do my re remarks, if you're a member of the House of Delegates. You don't have to stand up because it's hot. Just raise your, raise your hand. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot there are senators too. Uh, and Senate, House and Senate, just raise your hand. Thank you for being here and thank you for all your service. Okay. Um, as was mentioned, back in 2015, um, the prior governor, uh, well, even even after that, um, gave back a certain amount of monies that we could have been this day saying and having jobs. I, I, I said this to people previously. I firmly believe if we had that, the, the red line um, to take place when it was supposed to. I think a lot of the crime and um, a lot of other things that were happening would not because if you get someone a job, whether it's from the county or the city, it does make a difference. And I think that, and I'm just really thrilled. Another reason why I'm thrilled that this is really going forward. And thank you our, to our federal partners and the governor. Um, and regarding the governor, part of the reason I supported him was his commitment to a new east-west transit option. Um, let's be clear, everything is now more expensive. We know that, we realize that. But I am confident that this administration and our congressional delegation um, will do everything in their power once again to bring home, which they have, federal dollars for this project. As we move forward, if we move forward, there will still be difficult decisions to make. That's why today's announcement that the governor is restarting the conversation about our options is so important. So again, thank you, governor. Uh, we've all got to work together and be flexible to deliver the preferred transit alternative that the region deserves. Ultimately, a new east-west transit option will be a game changer for the west side of Baltimore County, County Executive Olchowski. As, as County Executive, 
he and I have been working uh, already for the last several months uh, to revitalize the Security Square Mall. And you're probably saying, why is she bringing that up? Because all this ties in. I mean, you, if you have this, you can get, we can get to you, people can get to you, you can get to us. Um, and we know that connecting the communities in Woodlawn and around, and around the mall with mark servers are an important part of these efforts. Uh, together, we can reduce commuting times, improve our local economies, and encourage more transit-oriented development. And I'm not going to say anything more, but let's get this done. Keep the lines of communications open between both the state and, and our federal partners and the community. And we'll have one fi fantastic uh, ribbon cutting and probably sooner than you think. Just saying. Thank you, Speaker. A project of this magnitude isn't possible without the support of federal, state, and local government, communities, and the business community. So I'd like to introduce a strong advocate and partner from our business community. In addition to being the CEO of Exelon, Calvin Butler is a civic-minded business leader serving on the boards of several prominent local organizations. I bring you a man who cares deeply about this community and is a champion of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Calvin Butler. Let me begin by uh, saying good afternoon to everyone, to my governor, good to see you, and to Senator Carton, Senator Van Hollen, um, Lieutenant Governor Miller, Speaker Jones, uh, Secretary Wiedefeld, Mayor Scott, County Executive Olasewski, and all of our distinguished guests here today, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be part of this occasion. When you talk about Team Maryland, please know that that includes the business community. We don't get here without all of us. And Speaker Jones just talked about the communications, lines of communication. Thank you for opening them up. Thank you for being consistent with them. As a representative of both Greater Baltimore Committee, we recognize the importance of connecting all of our neighborhoods. We recognize the importance of economic development in every sector of our communities. I often talk about put the need to put more equity into energy, but we need to put more energy into our equity efforts. And this is something, when you talk transportation, we must have equity in everything that we do. As a representative of the Greater Washington Partnership, I share we're a proud to be here. And why do I say that? Because the GBC recognizes the importance of this project in Baltimore and the state of Maryland. The Greater Washington Partnership recognizes the importance of this project to our state regions, all of them, because we recognize that we cannot advance if we don't have every corner of our communities advancing at the same time. And that's why it's important. As someone who leads the largest energy company in the United States, serving over 10 million customers, right here in Baltimore alone, the privilege to serve 2 million, and thank you, by the way, connecting with you through our, through our local company, BGE, we know how important it is, not only to keep the lights on and the gas flowing, but to provide opportunity, economic opportunity, for each and every one of you. So with that, I thank you. The benefit of coming at this point in the program, I could have come up here and just said ditto and said thank you. But I also want to talk about the positive impacts of the red line. We talk about the need to, and the General Assembly, to the members of the General Assembly, thank you for your thought leadership in transportation electrification. Why is that important? and I want all of you to think about this, is that we talked about climate change and the impacts of climate change. We know the impacts of climate change disproportionately impact black and brown communities. And having the red line removes cars from the roads and provide us an opportunity to provide a cleaner climate for our children and the next generations to come. And you need to know that the business community is committed in that endeavor and is going to partner with you every step of the way. So on, be on behalf of my 19,000 colleagues across Exelon, on behalf of all the businesses in Baltimore and our region, 
thank you very much for the leadership. We look forward to the continued partnership, and thank you for including us in this Team Maryland today. Thank you. Thank you. Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski has repeatedly proven his commitment to expanding access to easy, efficient, and reliable transit to help build a better Baltimore region. Baltimore County is a valued partner in advancing our transit initiatives that make the region stronger. Please welcome County Executive Olszewski. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is a proud moment for me to join so many colleagues from across the Baltimore region and our state for an announcement that's been a long time coming. I want to thank Governor Moore and his team for breathing new life into this project and for giving the entire Baltimore region hope that we may all finally have transportation options that meaningfully connect us all. Hope that was lost nearly a decade ago when the prior administration with the simple stroke of a pen killed the red line although we're bringing it back today. In the process, though, set our entire region back a generation. In the years since, we've seen our region continue to suffer from the lack of a regional east-west transportation solution. As a result, the Baltimore metro region remains one of the most congested areas in the country with our residents lacking those meaningful connections to job opportunities, education, health care, and more ways to improve their lives in profound and positive ways. Simply put, our people deserve better. They deserve access to efficient, reliable public transit. They deserve to have access to new opportunities and to meet their full potential. It's why that I am so excited to be joined by so many of these partners, because this is an effort that will require an all hands on deck effort. It's why I'm thankful for our congressional leaders uh, all of Team Maryland, but especially Senators Van Hollen and Cardin. That's why we are excited to have an amazing state delegation, including Baltimore County's own Speaker Jones, but it's no secret that Baltimore County is proud to be here standing with Baltimore City. It's why over the past few years in Baltimore County, we've made it a priority to make those long overdue infrastructure investments in our own transportation. Things like Baltimore County's first Office of Transportation, our first fixed route local transit service, now serving over 100,000 riders on a service that was launched in the middle of a pandemic. That local commitment is an important piece of the puzzle, but we need to think regionally and we need to think bigger. That's why I'm so excited to join Governor Moore and the entire Moore-Miller administration to celebrate this launch, this relaunch of a long awaited and still desperately needed project in providing a safe, modern, and reliable east-west connection, we expand our economy and we create a pipeline to major employers, spur redevelopment of communities in need, and make our region an even more attractive tourism destination. We preserve our environment by reducing greenhouse gases and emissions, and we improve our quality of life by reducing traffic congestion and strengthening connections between our neighbors and neighborhoods that for far too long have been removed from one another. And as we breathe new life into this project, I am grateful that everyone is acknowledging the ways in which this reimagined red line also is reflecting the incredible growth and change that our region has experienced this past decade. I am so appreciative of the many opportunities I've had to speak directly with Governor Moore, with Secretary Wiedefeld, not only on the need to revive this east-west connection, but also to make sure that any east-west project reflects that, those changes. In particular, I'm excited and grateful for the governor's recognition of the need to connect with the Baltimore region to those transformational job opportunities at Trade Point Atlantic, a site which has rapidly grown into one of the most dynamic shipping and logistics hubs in the world. So thank you to Governor Moore and his administration for listening to and being responsive, for fostering a collaborative process, and for their commitment in ensuring not only the red line is revived, but that the next phase of that red line extends this transformative project into eastern Baltimore County, creating a truly regional transit network. Governor, I am grateful for the ways in which we all share a comprehensive transit vision that one day connects our residents at a reimagined security square site, as the speaker said, 
to the life-changing opportunities at Trade Point Atlantic in eastern Baltimore County and all of the amazing things that Baltimore City has to offer in between. The Baltimore region has waited too long for this day, but I am excited about the potential of what this relaunched red line will mean for Baltimore County, Baltimore City, and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, County Executive. Now I'd like to welcome Mayor Brandon Scott. He understands firsthand the need for a responsive and reliable transit system, and that that is the key to a safe, stronger, and more vibrant region. I'm proud to have Baltimore City as a proud partner and strong partner to MTA as we deliver the red line and other critical transit projects. Please welcome Mayor Brandon Scott. Thank you, Madam Administrator, or should I say neighbor, because we are neighbors. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, let me start off by doing what is the most important thing that I will do and say today, and that's to say thank you to Governor Moore and to Lieutenant Governor Miller for keeping their word, for coming back here and reviving the red line. We owe them a debt of gratitude and another great round of applause. Because they had the courage uh, and the follow-through needed to come back here to be with us today. And of course, to the best uh, senators that a mayor in the country can ever have, thank you for everything, Senator Cardin. You're not gone yet, so we're gonna, I'm going to call you about 50, 11 more times before you're gone, sir. And of course, all of our partners, the city council, the president, the council members that are here, our great delegation, uh, senators and, and delegates, of course, Madam Speaker, I don't want no trouble with the Senate president today. Uh, but. Uh, thank you all, Lottie Dottie and everybody, as Congressman Cummins would say. Let's be very clear, everyone, that we knew and we all know that when the decision was made to cancel this billion dollar transit expansion for our community, it was a deliberate and catastrophic disinvestment into our great city. It was a massive loss for the entire region, but he who shall not be named knew it would be particularly devastating to Baltimore City. Because as you heard today in numbers, but I'll just remind you, not only was the project taken away from us, we were literally taken off the map. That's the signal that was, this, was sent for us. But after uh, the decision to neglect the city's needs, everyone sitting and standing before me today went back to work to salvage whatever we could and move forward in whatever way we could possible. For eight years, we tweaked policy and tackled the projects we could, like the highway to nowhere. But nothing we could do will be a replacement for a comprehensive and transformational project like the red line, Mr. Governor. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the significance of us being at this very spot announcing the revival of the red line. We are standing in the shadows of the highway to nowhere. A poster child, Mr. Governor, for racist highways and redlining as we know it. The leaders who decided to build it and those who decided to defund the red line sent a message that this neighborhood, this city, and the people who live in it did not matter. But today, with the revival of the red line, Governor Moore and his administration is sending a clear signal that those days are over and those who were disinvested in before will not be left behind any longer. We are standing, yes. We are standing in solidarity with our partners at every level of government and community to bring back this project which offers hope for the future for communities across Baltimore. And for that reason, today is a great day in the city. As the administrator said, I know personally in the impact of a, the lack of having east-west transit in Baltimore. I used to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and get on the bus at 5.30, Mr. Governor, to go from Park Heights to Mervo to get to school by 8 o'clock. And in fact, the fastest way for me to get home from northeast Baltimore to northwest Baltimore after track practice and college bound would be for me to catch the bus downtown and catch the subway back uptown. That is what young people, that is what families that are working have to do each and every day because we do not have the red line. Once this project is complete, those days will be no more. Revitalizing the red line reaffirms all of our commitment 
to equity and social justice. But simply, it's about building a Baltimore region that's actually functional for the people that live here. All the people that live here. Not just those who can afford cars, not just those who can afford to catch an Uber every day. At this point, we should be celebrating, cutting ribbons, riding the first rides on the original red line. But today's launch will have to do for us. As a city, as a region, as a state, we move forward. The red line represents a much of a ma major milestone today as it had did a decade ago. And I, for one, am able to speak for all Baltimoreans to say that we are not just glad, we are ecstatic to have a partner in the second floor in Annapolis that sees us and knows that we matter too. Thank you, Mr. Governor, for bringing the red line back. Everybody, now the tough part begins. We get to work to make sure that we're all able to get on that first ride together and go east, west, and Baltimore City, uh, out to Baltimore County. Maybe I'll go get some snickerdoodles from the Great Cookie and, and Security Square Mall like I used to do back in the day, Mr. County Executive. There's no Sears, so we can't take our family pictures there anymore. Sorry, you guys. But this is a huge day. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Thank you, Madam Lieutenant Governor. Thank you to our senators. Thank you, Mr. President. Everybody, we will do this, but the only way we'll do it is together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Scott, uh, my new neighbor. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce a man who has a deep understanding of transportation in Maryland. Transportation Secretary Paul Wiedefeld, we're so lucky to be able to count on your expertise and guidance as we work to build the transit system that our region deserves. Secretary Wiedefeld. I will be very brief, but Governor, this is a full circle moment for me. Uh, I grew up in Gobins, took the number eight uh, mayor all the way out to West Baltimore, to Mount St. Joe. I understand this corridor very well, and as former MTA administrator, I signed the Community Compact 15 years ago, where we worked with the community to move forward with this project. So we got the team to do it. We have obviously Holly and her team, and Mr. Tony Bridges, ex-delegate Tony Bridges over there. He's now the Assistant Secretary of Transportation, Equity, and Engagement, and he's going to be leading the effort with the communities in, the, in this corridor. So in closing, uh, Governor, uh, this is personal. It really is personal to me. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. Let's get ready. Let's get this thing done. Thank you, Secretary Wiedefeld. Uh, now I'd like to bring up um, Director Jones. Uh, for our your trade workers keep us moving, and these are the men, women and men who are going to help us build the red line. This project is going to bring new trade jobs to the region, and no one knows this better than Mr. Jones, a Baltimore native and the Baltimore director for the Baltimore DC Metro Trades Unions. So I'd like to welcome Director Jones. Secretary Wiederfeld, that was a short speech. Now that's what I call short. Okay, now <laughs> look, look, look. Now, now that put the pressure on me. So, so I'll try to, I'll try to be as short as possible because I know we're all cooking. But uh, I might use his extra 30 seconds. Like, no, no. But uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jermaine Jones, and I'm a proud member of Labor's Local 710. And as someone born and raised in Baltimore, I'm especially proud to stand before you today as the Baltimore Director for the Baltimore DC Building Trade Unions. First, let me tell you, on the behalf of the more than 26,000 members of the trades, we are more than ready to meet this moment and we are nothing short of excited when we envision the transformational impact this project will have on this region and its people. The red line must become a reality, and our members look forward to working hand in hand with Governor Moore, Lieutenant Governor Miller, Secretary Wiederfeld, Senator Cardin, Senator Van Hollen, Speaker Jones, Mayor Scott, County Executive Johnny O, members of the federal delegation, and others to ensure this project moves forward. And in turn, this project will also move us forward. Move us, by, move us forward by creating not just jobs, but careers. For those building the red line, transportation union, union members operating the red line, 
and the countless workers whose lives and the lives of their families will be impacted and, every, and even transformed by the service the Red Line will provide. Our unions are ready, ready to put in action the $60 million we spend annually on apprenticeship training. Training that is not only free, but earn as you learn model to build and refine the world-class workforce needed for a project of this scale. What's more, my brothers and sisters are ready, ready to reach into Baltimore City, ready to recruit our high school graduates and recent graduates throughout the Baltimore region, ready to recruit previously incarcerated citizens, ready to recruit single moms and everyone in between, offering that everyone has an opportunity for family sustaining careers. Because that's what this project means and that's what moving us all forward looks like. Some may ask, how do I know this project will connect communities? This project will connect, connect communities because our communities will build it. Our communities will drive it and our communities will thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Director Jones. Uh, the Central Maryland Transportation Alliance is among the leading advocacy organizations for improving transportation in Maryland. They are strong supporters for equity through mobility. Please welcome CMTA Chair Laura Gamble. Thank you, Administrator Arnold. I'm going to be brief if for no other reason than I sense that my face is rapidly turning the color of my dress, <laughs> as many of yours are as well. And that wasn't how I intended to demonstrate my support for the red line. As you heard, I am the chair of the Central Maryland Transportation Alliance, but I'm also the regional president of PNC Bank here in Greater Maryland. And as an employer, I know that we need a transportation system that better connects people with jobs, schools, and other destinations, regardless of race, class, or income. As you heard, I'm also the chair of Central Maryland Transportation Alliance, where we hold MDOT and local governments accountable for delivering transportation that's efficient, equitable, and environmentally sustainable. Greater Baltimore cannot thrive without addressing the missing piece in the transportation network, an east-west rapid transit line. And that's why we supported the red line originally, and that's why we applaud today's announcement. We encourage MDOT Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and the region's leaders to work with community stakeholders to find the best solution for the East-West Corridor. And that includes examining what can be reused from the red line planning, engineering, and environmental reviews to save time and money so we can move forward more quickly. We're encouraged by Governor Moore's timeline and thank him for his leadership and his continued support for the Baltimore region. And I was going to end there, but I was thinking as I sat there, I've been at this transportation advocacy thing for a long time. And I have to comment on the wonderful collaboration between our state, local, and federal officials. And thank you all. I, it has not always been there, and it is really a beautiful thing to behold. And I think we will definitely move forward with that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Few people have as long a history with the red line as the woman I'm about to introduce. Back when the red line was a little more than a rough blueprint, Lindhurst Community Association President Cynthia Shaw was an ally of MTA. She was instrumental in gaining community support for the project, convincing neighbors that the red line would serve as a critical link for West Baltimore to other parts of the region. I'd like to welcome Ms. Cynthia Shaw of the Lindhurst Community Association. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very, very much. I cannot believe that this is happening. What a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. 
I use and depend on public transportation throughout Baltimore City and County. So unfortunately, I know the horrors of our present transportation system. I was an advocate and volunteered for 13 years for the construction of the red line. As a volunteer, I experienced how our communities came together and did the work necessary. Oh, you can't hear me? Oh, and you missed the best part. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Should I? Well, I'm going to be brief. Um, I'm not sure if you heard that I said I am an advocate and volunteered for 13 years for the construction of the red line. As a volunteer, I experienced how our communities came together and did the work necessary to design and develop the red line project until it was shovel ready. We worked until it was shovel ready. We worked until it was fully funded and shovel ready. And then the red line was canceled. And I choose not to address the cancellation of the red line. Today, we are in a space and place of gratitude that we have a new governor who has the vision to breathe life back into the red line. Thank you to Governor Westmore and the Moore Miller administration for your leadership. As we say thank you, we have a request. Please put the shovel in the ground. We did the work. You have community support. Please put the shovel in the ground. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. There's no better way than to close out our program. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Thank you to our federal, state, and local partners, local businesses, community organizations, advocacy groups, elected officials, secretary, lieutenant governor, governor, and of course, our riders. Today is the first day in the step of, of delivering the red line. We need you with us every step of the way. Let's get this done.